you think there will be more offices that will cater to it also especially what i'm looking at now i've i've had a vi i've had several videos that people were pointing out already that because of social distancing uh that day 100 tao kasha dito ngayon 50 na lang then they will need more space also for it uh, that could happen and uh, it's going to be good for the people who are landlords kasi mas maraming space na ngayon ng kakailanganin sabi nga nila before uh, 5 square meter per person is enough. Ngayon, baka kailangan at least 8 square meters per person. Uh, the Pogo sector or the Pogo construction, they didn't really slow down. Uh, in effect, kumbaga, nag-slow down siguro sila in reality because bawal mag-construction. But yung drive nila, yung design nila, and yung demand, it doesn't seem like it slowed down. Uh, I've talked to some people in the construction business for Pogo. Go, go, go pa rin talaga hinahabol pa rin nila to get to finish the construction to get the pogo license to get the gaming license In this video we have Isel D Vice President of Spectrum Investments back in the vlog. I'm not sure if you've seen our previous videos with her, but I'll put it in the description if you want to see her inputs on what's happening. So, Isel, Spectrum Investments, um, Colliers came out with a report citing that uh, there could be a 15% decline in real estate prices. And just to give you context, there's a lot of Filipinos watching this that are either invested in property stocks or they have cash and are thinking about, is everything gonna be okay? Because what happens naman in the real economy, what happens in in the, in the real estate will also trickle down to sentiment in the stock market. So first question, is there a property bubble happening right now? I wouldn't call it a property bubble. Ang property bubble kasi is pag nagka-oversupply. And uh, I think uh, medyo na-address ngayon yung supply because also of the delay sa construction. And uh, a lot of developers are canceling all the launches this year, which I think is a very good decision, and delaying it to maybe next year or in two years kung kailan nila nakikita na uh, mababalance out yung supply and demand. Kasi it's really a supply and demand thing, di ba? Just a quick question on that. So, so we get to discuss it for people who are not too familiar with how supply and demand works. They are delaying the project so that the supply remains the same. There won't be excess, right? Exactly. Okay. Can you, can so you... Usually, naman, these developers, the reason why they're making new developments is because may nakikita silang need. And uh, like tayo, nakikita lang natin, ah, they're selling this, come incoming inventory for the next three to five years. But the developers, really, they do research. Uh, they coordinate siguro with uh, different Ano din, departments, kung ano ba mga plans ng government. Siguro tumringin mga jobs dito, they look at uh, BPOs ba para things so they build offices. Like the offices that are being built for the past few years and those that are going to finish for this year and next year, mga na-analyze nila na there's a need for these office offices. Now by delaying new projects, it's because they're seeing na, na there might be, uh, it's, it's I would agree, no? there might be a, uh, more vacancies coming in just because yung mga hindi na necessity with the extra condos, they will siguro stop. Like, uh, kung nagre-rent ako and then na I, I got uh, laid off, wala akong job ngayon, then I would not be needing that extra condo. I can just go back to my home. So, may ganun na may possible na mangyari, which uh, might result in a little oversupply, I think. Uh, which is uh, the reality if you're analyzing what's happening right now, which is hindi rin natin, it's still very uncertain at this point. Eh. We're in ECQ. Uh, we might go into GCQ by after May 15 or may, may or may not be, but still we don't know kung how long itong new norm na we're working from home, na nakakat yung ibang jobs, naka 50% lang yung going to offices. So uh, a lot of things ngayon medyo still uncertain. Uh, so, so to people also watching, uh, please do note the reason why they uh, are uh, lessening the new launches is because uh, what Isel said, if there's more supply, then those who own uh, 
units or even sa rental space, magpapababa sila ng price and they're trying to prevent that from happening. Uh, lesser uh, units na sobra, so walang ganun na magpapababa at a very, very uh, fast pace. So they're doing that as a protective measure. Okay, so regarding the 50, 15% drop in condo prices, uh, I think it's possible but it's really very hard to say na it's gonna be all across. Kasi different levels yan eh. We have condos starting from the ultra high, ultra luxury market, high end, mid market, lower market, affordable, and then yung mga low cost housing natin. So I think it will hit these different tiers very differently. Of course, yung mga investors na nawalan na ng job right now, those that are affected by itong COVID-19 situation, hindi na nila magiging priority to keep a condo. Maybe they want to liquidate. So they would be selling this. And since it's hard kasi to compare yung property prices na projected na drop, no, na 15%, it's it's being compared kasi to the drop 10 years ago uh, during the global financial crisis na nag-drop lang na 1%, right? And ito, projection is 15%. Uh, my analysis lang is because ang taas din kasi ng property prices natin ng 2018-2019. So maybe that 15% could be a correction for those areas na talagang sobrang tumaas yung price. Uh, abnormally, out of the ordinary. Now there's gonna be some correction. So it could be 15% in some areas, uh, in some tiers ng properties, like dun sa class ng buyers na mostly affected by layoffs, then baka mas maraming movement in selling doon. And because they already got 50 to 80% appreciation on the value of their property from when they bought it, let's say five years ago, then a 15% decline should be okay lang. Baka kumita pa sila from when they bought it. By the way guys, for stock investors watching this, no, especially for those who are zeroing in on uh, property stocks, Every time I sell tries to describe things, just try to imagine what sectors get affected, what what particular property developer is exposed into that. Because there's a lot, no, the the projects of Ayala Land, Mega World, Vista Land, uh, Cent Century, SM Prime, they they may have some similarities, but there are some segments where they're primarily focused on BPO. There are some uh, that they're just focused on residential. So uh, try to analyze it from what's what's being said. Uh, I, I have another question that. When you said the 15%, uh, which do you think gets affected more, no? Uh, Mid-end, low-end, high-end in terms of property development. And te tell me kung tama yung analysis ko, no? When you have high-end, you have the Shangri-La, you have the Rockwell, then you have most likely Ayala Land Premier in that area. Then on the lower end, you have your uh, 899 Holdings, you have your Vista Land also there. Then you have, I guess, Amaya, uh, Amaya area in, in the mix. And mid-end, you'll probably have Robinsons, Mega World, uh, as, as part of those property development companies. I guess if you analyze it, no, the ones buying from ultra high and ultra luxury properties, they're really the people with money, and most of the time they're buying these talaga for personal use, either for them or ipapamana nila, or they just really actually karamihan ng buyers sa ultra luxury, dahil alam nila this is an ultra luxury product. I just need to have one. I just need to be a part of it. Parang mga Ferrari, Lamborghini yan. Uh, and then the lower end market naman, uh, because most of the time they're buying these properties really for their personal use, that's where they live, then they'll try to keep it. Uh, hopefully may mga initiative naman to help with the loans. Like ngayon may mga delays naman on the payment of the loan. I think yung mostly na mag-let go ng mga properties nila are the ones na still paying for it and are only buying it for investment. So yung iba ang purpose nila is I have extra money, I'm seeing that real estate is good, so gusto ko ilagay dito. But now, because of this pandemic, we don't know what's gonna happen, there's uncertainty, then nothing's gonna be, nothing's gonna change kasi sa current lifestyle mo. Like ako, if, if, uh, if I'm choosing to liquidate some properties, I will not liquidate this property kasi ako nakatira, but maybe yung ilan sa investments ko na still under installment, konti pa lang nabayad ko, then maybe I can let go of this one. Or maybe this one, since tumaas na, I bought it five years ago, I can sell it at a very low price, be lower than the developers, and it will still be attractive to some people just to get some liquidation in. 
I, I I know that you posted a link no for those who but by anihan link for those who want to sell their properties at at this time. Uh, what would be the process for someone who wants to buy a condo from that person, but that that condo is still under loan? Two possible loans, no. Yung isa, if naka installment pa under the developer, then it's gonna be easy. Kasi dito ka assignment lang siya. So, iko continue lang niya yung term from the developer. And they just have to go through the usual process na may konting credit check lang. But it's a lot easier if it's still under the developer. Now, if the property is under the bank, uh, it gets a little bit trickier. Uh, I'm not sure if the banks will allow na parang magpa-approve ng loan yung second buyer tapos si transfer. But it's possible for the second buyer to get a loan approval tapos uh, ito take over na yun. if it's under loan majority of the people who buy they, they buy it cash or meron pa rin naman uh, nag loan to pay for the loan of the of the other person alam mo before when we're tra- transacting with resale secondary market laging cash na but uh, lately even before itong si covid nagiging acceptable na na your buyer is going to use a bank loan to process it. So, possible naman siya. It's just a longer process lang siya. And, siguro, mas maingat din sa contract and everything kasi yung title kailangan matransfer mo na sa buyer bago siya makakaloan. There's a lot of property stocks that are highly connected to Pogo. Now, uh, I, I just saw a recent disclosure also just a few minutes ago before we stepped into this call that they're gonna open Pogo again. Uh, is this something that will spark, uh, I guess, mara revitalize again new property industry with all of this uncertainty? Given that one of the drivers for the faster movement of prices was Pogo. Uh, definitely for me, because Pogos uh, are bringing in people with currently no existing houses here. So automatically, magdalaga ng tao dito wala silang bahay. They're gonna look for places to rent. And uh, I know there's a lot of negativity na nakokonnect ng tao with Pogos, but no comment no sa negativity. But uh, economy-wise, they're really helping th- this country a lot. Kasi nag- nag-bring in talaga sila ng money, they're helping umiikot yung real estate. If Pogos are gonna open and more more workers are gonna come in here to, to operate, then it's gonna be good for the real estate. Given that it's opening, do you think that uh, hindi na ito mawawala, wala ng threat for this? Over the next year, over the next two years, or is there a chance that if I'm, if, if from a mass perspective, uh, can people start confidently buying units again and offer it to uh, Chinese tenants, both from a business perspective and from a residential perspective? I don't think people will start quickly jumping into the buying game again uh, to to cater to Pogos just because. This trauma will stay for a few, di ko alam kung months or years, but it will uh, it will definitely affect the decision making. Hindi ka tulad nung pre-COVID or just last year, we're in as long as kaya mo sige, grab this opportunity para mo sa mga pogo workers, di ba? Kasi sayang. Uh, ngayon, uh, it also depends on how how much the price is, no? So kung meron mga very interesting price selling na mangyayari sa secondary market, then it could trigger some people with extra money to buy. But I think, in general, hindi siya muna ganun ka magiging mabilis yung pag-take up ng mga people to buy property for investment. Uh, I think a lot of people will still hold on to their money right now until after talagang siguro pag may vaccine na, totally wala ng cases. You think there will be more offices that will cater to it also, especially what I'm looking at. No, I've I've had a vi- I've had several videos that people were pointing out already that because of social distancing, uh, that day 100 tao kasha dito ngayon 50 na lang. Then they will need more space also for it. Uh, that could happen, and uh, it's gonna be good for the people who are landlords, because mas maraming space na ngayon ng kakailanganin. Sabi nga nila before. Uh, 5 square meter per person is enough. Ngayon, baka kailangan at least 8 square meters per person. Uh, the Pogo sector or the Pogo construction, they didn't really slow down. Uh, in effect, kumbaga, nag-slow down siguro sila in reality because bawal mag-construction. 
but yung drive nila, yung desire nila, and yung demand, it doesn't seem like it's slowed down. Uh, I've talked to some people in the construction business for Pogo, go, go, go pa rin talaga. Hinahabol pa rin nila to get, to finish the construction, to get the Pogo license, to get the gaming license. The whole world right now is experiencing this, uh, this pandemic, but not just a pandemic, the effects of the pandemic in the economy. Uh, a lot of people are projecting that uh, some of the businesses magtitipid. And part of that is baka mag-outsource sila sa Pilipinas. Uh, how do you see the out the BPO industry in the Philippines in line with what's happening around the world? Will it be much, much better for us since we are the outsourcing hub, eh? India and us and some countries which are a very, very small segment of it, but we're one of the biggest outsourcing markets in the world. Uh, will this be our upside from given all of this that's happening as well. Very positive, very excited about it. Kasi I think uh, there's a big chance na ito yung pwedeng positive na output uh, na effect dito sa Philippines because uh, we're known to be a outsourcing hub. We're, we're actually ready for it. Nagawa na natin for how many years uh, with Pogo who came in a few years ago. It also proved na we, we really can can do this outsourcing service, and ako I'm 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 really really hoping na etong outsourcing etong mga offshoring is what boosts our economy moving forward. Things to watch out for uh, from people, BPO industry, Pogo, and ako I have another question, and it's one of our drivers remittances. Our remittances are slated to drop because again of what's happening. Uh, should should people be worried that those those were the people that would have bought uh, properties as well, or you think it it will stabilize and meron din mga sasalo nito that that will somehow protect the property market also? Every crisis, kasi meron lang changes na nangyayari and then it balances out eventually. Like ngayon, what I'm seeing is a lot of uh, jobs are. Maraming jobs na nakat, but also a lot of jobs are being available, and these are yung BPO work from home. Uh, pwedeng voice, pwedeng uh, type. I actually did a little experiment, no? Tikilik ko talaga, I tried to apply. Hindi ko lang tinapos, baka sabihin, baka, baka i-hire nila ako as a worker. But uh, may mga requirements, and, and maraming nag-respond, and mabilis na fill up yung mga positions. So I think we're gonna move slowly to that yung mga dahan-dahan na kaya nilang kunin dito kahit maliit lang na starting from 10 to 20 people then slowly nila i-grow kung may mga kaya mag-work from home to service yung mga pag-response sa email the one I, I almost applied to is parang customer service through email strong din ngayon yung mga virtual assistant so these are people just staying at home uh, nangyari na to before COVID but I think mag-grow ito and there's a lot of people na doing trainings for virtual assistant from a from a person who has been exposed in the real estate industry, how will you do that this property company is good or not? The best thing is to look at the company. Gano katagal na ba siya? Ano ba yung historically, na-proven na ba niya yung integrity niya? Kasi during 1997, everybody was affected. Ayala Land was hit also noong 1997. But the thing was, natapos. The most was na-delayed konti yung project, but tinapos. Hindi siya nagpakap and go. Uh, so you you research on developers like this na may mga wala wala kung alam na developer na zero palpak may palpak talaga but the thing is you have to look at how do they react pag meron mali na nagagawa pag may palpak ang development how do they uh, how do they respond not react, how do they respond then etong crisis actually is a good test to see kung kung maga if, kung gusto mo tong development na to, you research ano ba nangyari, ano ba ginawa ng property management during atong ECQ, very well maintained by yung property, uh, where were the property manager there during this time na kailangan siya ng mga homeowners, you look at how your developers are taking care of the building, how they are uh, uh, responding to atong building ba, nagkaroon ng, hindi mo nang maiwasan eh, some buildings kahit gano'ng kaingat at kalinis ka, baka meron COVID patient na nakatira because they contracted it outside. I think having a COVID case in a property will not bring the property values down. It's really how they responded. 
Lalo nga, maganda nga na test yan eh. Kung mayroong COVID patient na isa doon sa buong building, then walang nahawa, then ibig sabihin magaling, magaling yung maintenance ng building. So, do you mean that we're very, very far from 1997? Whatever happened in the Asian financial crisis in 1997, we are not there right now. Kahit na we are in the midst of crisis, uh, this is something different and what happened before won't. Parang we're safer than that. I agree. Uh, I think we, we, we learned a lot from the 1997, 1997 crisis. That's why... Uh, sobrang strict mag-loan sa bank natin, okay lang eh. These are all uh, parang we're just being conservative. But uh, for for those who are looking back into the trauma of 1997, uh, all of the analysts are saying that it's gonna be, it's not gonna be as bad as 1997. For people that are going through a rough time right now, uh, any words of encouragement for them also? Uh, what 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 can you any insight anything that you would want to leave with them what worked for me is a balance of number one really praying really going back to god's word there's so much assurance there during the first two weeks i actually had the hard time falling asleep so sobrang daming iniisip so i listened to worship music that calmed me down and then na ngayon with all of the available free webinars, all the available lockdown videos ni Marvin. <laughs> siya, walang bola. Malaking tulong siya because uh, you, you get to hear from a lot of different people. It's either you get inspired or you learn something or or, or you get assured of something, di ba? So, ang dami-daming resources ngayon na if, if uh, sabi ko, parang mas busy ako ngayon eh. Umaga hanggang gabi, yung iba, recorded, recorded replays na lang pinapanood ko kasi nagsasabay yung schedule. So I try to, uh, every free time, instead of uh, ma-feel ang siya ko, I try to listen. Even yung mga topics na uh, walang connect sa akin, I try to listen in. Uh, I join groups even about yung mga virtual assistants, about yung mga work from home because you learn a little something. Try, try to look at all these videos to see they're, they're very inspiring. Yung, yung, uh, yung YouTube mo with uh, Willy Chua. Because of that, pinalo ko na sa FB. So every morning, very, very, ano, very inspiring yung mga videos niya. He's actually talking about in this crisis, you should not be trying to survive. You're supposed to thrive. And uh, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just end it with this. You are trying to help people also right now that... Um, baka nahirapan sila sa loans nila that they want to sell it. I, I saw the link that you did. It's called Bay- it's called Bayanian. Can you tell us more about that? But I'll put the link below also. And there might be people na matutulungan nyo rin doon. Because we do get calls from people who are asking kung meron bang nagbebenta ng mababa. Uh, there are people who are looking out for good deals. And at the same time, there are people na are are weighing their priorities and uh, deciding na alam mo mas importante ngayon na I, I put all my resources dito sa business ko for it to survive investment lagi naman may opportunity diyan so i want to sell my property i'm okay to sell it lower where we're making a resource for all of these uh, good deal properties to be accessible in one siguro in one site we're still trying to uh, pinaplan siya pa namin ni Carla kung kung paano namin siya i to share ng maayos na mabilis makita and how, how we can uh, uh, look over the properties as well. But uh, it's helping all of these sellers pull together all of their listings in one uh, link na all the interested buyers can choose. Wait, what I'll do is I'll put the link below for those who want to do that. And ISIL D also has a coaching session. I'll put the link below if you want to consult with her after this. So thank you so much ISIL D for being part of this vlog. We have part two of this. It will be in my other channel naman. You can go there. I don't know when it, how big is the gap from this video to, to the time that it will be posted on the second channel. You can look at it, Marvin Germa podcast. But uh, ISIL D on that video will talk about how can you make extra money in this time of crisis and I'm sure it's something that's very very important to a lot of people especially that if you think that you're disrupted right now uh, it's something that you might also want to watch out for so 
I hope you guys got a lot from this. If you have any questions, just put them in the comment section. Then we'll try to make uh, either answer it or make new videos off of the questions that you guys you have been sending. So thank you so much to everyone who has joined us up until the end. Thank you so much, Isel D. Also, sobrang yaman na Isel D. Uh, iba yun na problema pero mayaman uh, compared to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but ayun, I hope this video helps you guys, and I hope this helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon, and God bless you all. Oh,